Uh, I was uh, severely obese, and I lost a lot of weight uh, growing up. I had a lot of uh, problems with uh, body images and stuff, and uh, body in image concerns, look, they have a significant impact on um, self-esteem, mental health. Like, what are some practical steps you can give um, individuals so they can improve their body image or develop, let's say, no, develop a healthier relationship with their physical appearance? Yeah, and I would even say kind of just a – a better relationship kind of with our bodies. So yeah. first of all, just to, I mean, I'm, it's great that you're sharing like what your experience was oh, and terrible. saying like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. well, and I think to be able to say like, this shows up for people, right? The idea of body image disturbances, whether that's going through a rough kind of patch or a rough day or a rough moment, it's like, none of us are immune to this. And well, why is that? Because we live in a very weight centric um, weight biased and like and diet centric culture right of this idea that my body is a thing for me to control is supposed to look a certain way and in terms of bullying discrimination all sorts of stuff that often folks who are in larger bodies or at larger sizes they're saying hey this isn't like my perception of myself I'm actually incurring a lot of like really shitty treatment mm. this is a problem I am facing in my life that makes me feel really bad and I think in that case for us to be able to say, like, can we can we work at doing a bit of that kind of grief work? I mean, especially if we're going, like, hey, hey, as an adult, I remember this. Yeah, there's probably some grief that goes along with that, right? Mm. You Anybody who experienced that is going, like, yeah, there were some things that, like, I needed that I didn't get or I needed my environment to be different. And to really be able to say, like, you know, my whenever it is kind of that relationship to my body or my body image is how I'm feeling about myself and how I'm perceiving my body that body image problems are not a problem with our body. It's the the cognitions and it, kind of emotions hmm. that we're experiencing that go along with it. So first step is to sort of say, this is not my body's fault. If I'm, if I'm having a bad body image kind of day or I'm really struggling with this now, the answer is not to take this out on my body. My body is part of me. It's like, that's gonna be sort of that ride or die relationship we have beyond anything else sometimes just that just that they're realizing like hey, i'm stuck in this body for me that was a lot like oh my god like i'm gonna be like this for the rest of my life mm. but then i realized like okay well i can actually do something to change it and then when i saw the changes i was like okay wow i'm not gonna stop but now it doesn't stop it never did yeah so every time i look at me, look at myself in the mirror or whatever it's just like oh my god it's not enough it's still not enough it's still not enough so like it just i don't know how do I get rid of that? <laughs> this is this is my show now. <laughs> okay. Well, and it's, so I think that oftentimes folks, um, you know, say experiencing like an eating disorder that's really kind of really really kind of preoccupied with with shrinking and, and weight loss would experience something similar, right? Like, well, when I hit this number on the scale, that then I'm going to feel better. It's not about the number. No, and but that's a really great eating disorder lie. Ooh. Well, that there's a body. There's a certain body, there's a composition, there's an aesthetic where you'd be totally satisfied that there's some aesthetic or archetype of a person who never is hard on their body and doesn't have body image concerns. Mm -hmm. And that's just not true, right? Mm -hmm. There are people who aren't preoccupied with body image concerns and those people may look all kinds of ways. So for us to be saying like, well, one is to recognize that, that this, this loop I've got going on in my head just keeps kicking that bar farther and farther down the line, right? It's, I'm in this kind of like losing hamster wheel where no matter what I do and how hard I work, it either goes, good job, you've come this far. What about the next thing when it's being kind of like benevolent? Hmm. Um, or when it's being more critical of like, that's it? You want me to be happy with this? What about that? He looks this way. She's lost this much. Neither work, right? Because we're saying, like, legitimately, no matter what I do, no matter how I change, this, like, this more kind of cognitive loop in my head is just going to change the rules. It, it comes back to self-care. Mm -hmm. You know, self-care, is it's often emphasized, like, as an important, like, aspect of maintaining mental health and honestly to me that's what helps me the most is self-care taking care of you yourself it could be it could be physically it could be mentally it could be you know from the food you eat like and you said something really important yeah. of like oh this is my body i'm stuck in 
well, if we think, hey, I'm, I'm in a partnership here with my body and look at all the things that it's, it does for me on a daily basis that it's been able to do, mm. right? All of those times, that moment of, of stress, no matter how crappy I was feeling, my body did some pretty cool things, maybe around emotion regulation, helped me find a coping way, right? Whether that, that might not be something that I, I want as my sort of like one tool in the kit, yeah. but my body and my brain figured out how to get us through. And if we can change from, this is my body I'm stuck with and I need to control it to like, this is my body, it is mine. From an acceptance standpoint of like, this is my body right now. Okay. Mm. It's my home. We're gonna be together hopefully for a long time. Mm -hmm. That's the idea. That's when things are going well. Mm -hmm. There are gonna be times when I'm happy with it when it's happy with me, mm -hmm. and times that when we're kind of at odds. But can I show up, and even times when I don't maybe necessarily kind of like my body or I'm not happy with it, can I act from a space of respect? Mm -hmm. Your lovely girlfriend is here today, so I know you're in a relationship. <laughs> yep. <laughs> As a you know couples therapist and longtime married person, where we can say, are we always happy with our partners? I'm going to go out on a limb here and say at our house, no. <laughs> Speaking on behalf of my partner, yeah. he's cheering in the background. Um, <laughs> but if we, want, if we want a relationship to be healthy, yeah. if we want to grow, if we want that to endure, we can say, hey, I'm, I might be really angry with you right now. I might not be really happy. I might not want to engage. But can I show up in a way that is respectful of the other person as opposed to like, guns blaring, I'm angry with you, so I'm gonna rip you down. Mm. That doesn't work. And I think we, when we look no, at that, that from that relationship frame, this is the relationship I'm having with my body. I may not like her right now. We might kind of really be at odds, right? She's doing one thing for my survival. I'm holding another idea in my head. Okay, can we kind of like put the guns down and yeah. say, I will approach you from a place of respect. It has to be your peace and has to be your, you know, your, your, when you, to me, when you come home, it has to be your, your place of support, your place of speed, uh, of peace, like a, a place where you can, can go and, and, and talk about whatever, where there's no, there's no judgment or, cause I've had, you know, negative relationships where our emotions were just all over the place. Like one, you have to talk about your emotions. And number two is to, to, to be open, like to whatever she is going to say, or he is going to say, you have to be open to it. If you're not open, it's it's going to be so hard to communicate. And communication is key. If you have no communication, your relationship will not last. Yeah, I think it's Chris Rock who has that joke about like you know it's it's pretty easy to move a sofa with two people, mm -hmm. but like damn near impossible to do it by yourself. Yeah, and uh, like that model of relationships of saying yeah, if we if we want something to be healthy, if we want change in our relationship, um, and I think even that applies to our relationship with our body, right? If I say hey, I want my body to start you know, being better with telling me like hunger cues or kind of recovering from like a physical injury or something. Well, I can't say, hey body, like carry that sofa alone. Mm. I need to also be saying I am I am mentally and behaviorally showing up and, and also giving you what you need. Mm. And when you said like, you know, if our relationships are these places we come home to, moving that over to our relationship with ourself, like our body is truly what we come home to. Mm. And a lot of times folks with with, with eating disorders, with chronic health conditions, um, with trauma histories, especially if that's been body-based, have a really, really hard time feeling at home and connected with their bodies. And that's part of the work that we do around saying like, we wanna get you reacquainted, both with your physical self, your emotional self, or that idea of like, oof, to, you said talk about my feelings. Even sometimes internally, I have to be okay. First acknowledging I am a person with feelings, they're all okay. There's not good feelings and bad feelings. We're just, some are more comfortable than others. Some of us have different rules about which ones are good ones and bad ones. Mm -hmm. um, but that it's, it's all information from our system about what we need more of, less of, and, and what's working for us. Our complicated system. We're messy. Yeah, we it, are. It's part of our charm. A soup of emotions. <laughs> and it's also just, it's, it's part of our human condition that we're...